the VSN Arcade Podcast. Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? Ah! Tribune! You hold the fire with your face! Not the smartest way to greet the heavily armed group that just kicked in your door. Head to virtualsportsnetwork.com and sign up for the forums today. Everybody, welcome back to another special brand new spanking edition of the Virtual Sports Network Arcade Radio Podcast, sponsored from virtualsportsnetwork.com. It's on to perform today. This is episode 95 again of the VSN Arcade Radio Podcast. I'm your host once again, Jay Dizzle. The lunk for the ride with me is the one and only Mr. Producer Man himself, Mr. Swarley. How are you doing this evening? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Good to hear, good to hear. Now, again, this week it's just us. Our friend Nub is still ha- still trying to recover from his hangover. Hangover. Yeah, hangover from uh, Hangout Fest. So he'll be at Sunline until about. I don't know how long he can actually have a hangover, but at least until E3. So we're looking forward to having him back, though. Uh, I am Mr. Yeah, the one and only Mr. I am Eddie is still MIA. Wish him well. Hope he comes back soon. Bob Maruski is still shooting his pants on YouTube. I will be putting a link sometime on virtualsportsnetwork.com uh, so everybody can actually look at the YouTube video when he was playing Outlast with the face cam. Hilarious shit. You guys should see it. But without further ado, we are again here at episode 95. We're here to talk about video games, video game news, video game releases, so on and so forth. Anything you can think about, about about video games, we're here to talk about. So, basically, we have the agenda today, and like we always do every week, first we like to talk about what we've been playing and what, what we actually picked up recently. So, I leave it to you, Swirly. What have you been playing recently, man? Uh, I've been slacking the past couple weeks. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just Spider Man was so shitty that it just took my soul for a little while. <laughs> Uh, but I still, I still haven't gotten to my Outlast DLC or, um, Child of Light. Uh, but what I have been doing, um, I've been playing some Forza 5, uh, both with my Apex guys at VSN and with the other guys over at Realistic Racing. Finally had a half-decent night at Realistic Racing, because those guys can tune cars like a motherfucker. And I can't. So, <laughs> for a couple weeks there at the beginning, it wasn't wasn't too good. Um, but yeah, that's been fun. And this next one kind of goes along with a purchase I made, so I'll just lump it all together. Since it's the only purchase I've made anyways. But I have... I've done it. I've gone to the dark side Swarley is now a part of the Master Race. Uh-huh. I bought a PC tower. Um, and um, some of us Apex guys have been kind of making the jump. Uh, so I bought a three-month month subscription to iRacing. Um, we've got, so far, we've got me and Garrett and Jay Bauer is God. Pepper signed up tonight and JMS is going to sign up. This weekend, I think. Um, yeah, so purchased the tower, uh, the iRacing subscription, and a new wheel. Um, and it has been so much fun. I mean, everybody on VSN already knows how much I'm ridiculously into sim racers on the consoles. Shut up, birds. God. Um, but as soon as I got into this, it is just, it's not even another level. It's like another five levels up. It is, it's insane. And is that I, much better than Forza? It really is. Cause I mean, it's a lot more realistic. Like in Forza, you can pretty much just slam the gas and brakes and you can compete. But like I went to... Um, an official practice session yesterday and today, uh, may, well, mainly yesterday when I first went into practice session, I went to a track, it's for a track that is in Forza as well, so I've been racing this track for years. I basically had to relearn how to race this track, because, I mean, slamming gas and pedal, and where I would um, shift, it was just... It was not working for something like this. I'd be spinning out in every corner. 
But I mean, just the precision and how you have to be gentle with your car, it's just fantastic. Plus the fact that they actually have safety rating on iRacing. So if you're just going around like a little doucher, like most of the open lobbies in Forza and just wrecking everybody, your safety rating is going to go way down and you won't be able to advance up to higher licenses and race better cars. So that's pretty cool. So they actually penalize you for being a douchebag on one? Yes. Nice. And I did my first race today. I was so freaking nervous. Uh, raced at five. Um, started out, I, I ended up not qualifying because I wanted to start in the back um, just to get my bearings. And it was kind of a, it's kind of a mess ahead of me. I had a few off tracks uh, that just trying to avoid some people. But, you know, as everybody was getting damaged and going into the pits and whatnot, I found myself up in second place with eight laps in um, out of a ten-lap race. But then, man, coming down the hill at Laguna, I spun my car out, and uh, I ended up placing fourth. But I started tenth, so it was, it was pretty good for my first time. So it was, it was a lot of fun. So you have anything else as far as uh, purchases? No, that, <laughs> that was enough of a purchase that I probably shouldn't purchase anything for a while. But I'll still be getting Watch Dogs and Mario Kart this month, so. Cool, cool. All right, um, let's see, what have I been playing personally? Well, I've been streaming a lot more lately. Uh, I missed out on a day yesterday, but I've been trying to at least try to keep it at least to a four or five day schedule. Uh, Monday, I believe, I started up my Mixed Bag Mondays for my Twitch channel. I know it's self-promotional like that. Nobody else needs that. But, um, basically, I tried doing something along the lines of streaming, like, every hour on the hour. So I ended up playing stuff like, um, I guess this kind of counts as a purchase, even though technically it's under PSN, uh, PlayStation Plus program, so it was quote-unquote free. Uh, what was it? Uh, Stick It to the Man. I played that. Uh, second hour was Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which is kind of fun. You know, all I did was just put around and uh, drive the boat, or sail the boat, actually. Um, third hour, I think I played Call of Duty Ghosts. And what, what's funny to me is that out of, like, the looks that you see on Twitch, like, people who actually looked at all your archives and everything else like that, I still get the most looks off every time I play Ghosts. I play bad at Ghosts. Uh. It's like, literally, it's just an hour of me just getting shot in the face. But I got more looks on that than anything else. Uh, the next hour after that, I played a little bit of Dead Nation. I think that was my last hour of uh, Mixed Bag Monday. So some something I found interesting, at least on Mondays, that I want to try doing because it'll get me through my uh, my uh, backlog, at least, even though it's like an hour every time. But at least it gets me playing all the games I have versus them just sitting there. Like I have a shit ton of PlayStation 3 games I still have to get to. Like I have... Uh, that Metal Gear Solid HD collection, I still haven't unwrapped. It's just sitting there, and I need to play it. Yeah, I've got the, uh, the Legacy collection. I've only gotten to MGS2. Yeah. Uh. Like, <laughs> I, I have a cap, I have a, another copy of Alpha Protocol that I finally got oh, back, and I haven't played yes. that. I have Dark Souls 2 I need to play. Uh, fucking, I need to keep on playing through Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. Drop everything you're doing and go play Alpha Protocol. <laughs> that fucking game is so awesome. I know, I played it. That's why I got it for you during, oh, during fucking it. Secret Santa, man. I love it so much. Um, let's see. Every time we try to organize like a Grand Theft Auto V uh, night, because they keep on doing DLC, I'm always disappointed, except for the parts where I end up blowing up everybody's cars. It's kind of fun for me, but everybody else kind of hates it. Understandable. Uh, fucking... I got both Dragon Age uh, games, so on and so forth. Uh-oh. Uh, last time I streamed, though, I streamed a little bit of Wolfenstein, The New Order. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but that was pretty fun. Um, that You can add that to my purchases, because I just picked that up. Uh, it took me a little while to actually pick it up, because I went to both GameStops in my neighborhood, and both of them were sold out for purchasable copies, but they still had, like, they were still sitting on at least five to eight copies for pre-orders, which I found interesting because they explained to me uh, since the whole downsizing of uh, GameStop thing has been happening recently, uh, basically it's gone down to 
their whole system of pre-orders for new games and how they ship out games. It's not just like uh, Gears of War or Call of Duty where they just like ship out hundreds of copies of games because they know they can they can just repurchase the copies, especially like Xbox copies. With Wolfenstein, it was just like it's not quite a niche game or niche game or whatever, but just enough that they know that they're really hardcore fans or they're really into the advertising and really want to buy the next best thing for next gen or current gen, um, those people pre-ordered. Everybody else has to wait. So I had to uh, get my ass all the way down to Walmart to go pick up my copy. And that was like one of the last two copies they had left. So I was just like, well, fuck it. I got to buy it anyway. So like, I, I basically went around town like 10 miles on pedal bicycle looking for this shit. I finally got it. So I'm, I'm glad to see that it's selling well. And it's, it's gotten some good reviews, and I'm glad to see it selling. Yeah, it's popular enough for me to not fucking waste gas on it, get some exercise for the fucking thing, so damn well better be good. Um, what else? Um, I think I said I bought Bound by Flame last week, if not the week before, so... Um, and Mari added Stick It to the Man as far as a game that I picked up. I thought it was okay. It gave me a vibe like um, Psychonauts, sort of. The way that the uh, art style is and some of the, the gameplay elements, but really it was just like it was like a one-two note type of game with some platforming. I know it's an indie game and it was part of the indie game initiative that Sony started during E3, so it's not terrible, but I wouldn't I wouldn't spend more than like five bucks for it. So, but uh, as far as that, I think that's that's it for me playing and picking up at least. So. Um, I know you wanted me to talk about Wolfenstein, right? Yes. No spoilers, okay. though. Um, I'm not going to treat it like I treated uh, Child of Hi- Child of Light last week, where I just basically rambled on and on because on and on because I was fucking gushing about the game. I'll just tell you right now that if you are a big fan of the Wolfenstein name, even if you were like super old head playing Castle Wolfenstein on, uh, I believe it was the Atari. Or if you're like me and you play Wolfenstein 3D on DOS, this is your game. It's got... It, it, it's pretty much everything that you would hope for from like a named franchise that's kind of been sitting around and wallowing in a muck. Something like a... Uh, uh, like a Duke Nukem or a Shadow Warrior. But they actually get it right. Uh, you, you shoot and you stab and you just mutilate the Nazi regime as B.J. Blaskowitz. Um, it's cool that they give you all sorts of weaponry that you just point and shoot. It's corridor shooting. Um, the interesting points about the game are um, the setting. It's like alternative history. It's like a what if of uh, what if back in the 1940s the Nazis won World War II and like took over the entire globe, not just you know Europe. They took over you know. Everything. And basically afterwards, there's no more military. Like they literally say in the advertisement for it, it's like there's no more lit- no more military, there's nobody to stop them. There's no resistance. So basically you get points in the game where um, I guess there's been s- some comparisons to Bioshock Infinite to where there's like alternative history, yet there's still some similarities with uh, conter- contemporary themes, even though the game is set a little bit later on in 1960. Like there's, they're brought up... Uh, References to the Beatles in this game. Um, also, uh, contemporary names. I think John Lennon was brought in at one at one time that I've heard. And like they're instead of what they would normally do in our time setting, they're actually like war heroes as part of their resistance and uh, against the Nazi regime in uh, Wolfenstein, which is pretty interesting. Um, also, since we're going with alternative history, they really go for replayability with this in that. Literally where you can just run around and shoot things like you normally would in the old school woman's center. Or you can sneak around and kind of play it stealthily to where you're running around with, like, throwing knives or just regular stick and stab knives. And you can run around like, uh, sneak attack dudes. And there's definitely an element of, um, basically, they have, like, self games now to where, like, you, you go after commander units and if you get rid of them, they can't sound alarms to get reinforcements. So that's in the game. Also, uh, 
or multiple routes and things like that, there's uh, alternative timelines in the game. Like there's a very important choice that you have to make at the very beginning in the prologue. And depending on who you pick in that choice, you actually have two timelines. So you get character A or you get character B. So you have to play through twice to get the whole story. And there's really no change except for like maybe some map changes here and there and obviously with the characterizations and things like that throughout the game. But there's always that. So there's always there's also unlocks that you have to get. Um, I think there's uh, Enigma machine per se can get. There's uh, art renderings. There's uh, character renderings. Like you see something like in Batman, but you can't turn around the actual uh, figures. So you just see them rendered on screen in front of you. So that's kind of cool. Um, there is no multiplayer, which is unfortunate. But the game runs at about 15, 20 hours if you try to find everything in the game, so it's worth it um, if you're willing to spend money for the Wolfenstein name and you're knowing that you're going to get a good game, which is a very big surprise because, like I was saying before, with Shadow Warrior and with Duke Nukem, you got the name, but you didn't necessarily get a great game out of it. So this is different. It's definitely worth the purchase, especially if you're looking for something to play. Um, I would warn people. I know people that listen to our podcast, obviously – you know, cursing is not a big problem. Nudity is not a big problem, whatever. But Nudies. I wouldn't. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> there's a scene. There's a sex scene in the game. You don't actually participate, but there's a couple of seconds of actual live sex happening in the game. It's not pornographic or anything, but it's like a rated R sex scene, you know. Um, but yeah, you can't play it in front of mom and dad. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, definitely pick it up if you can. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad, to, like I said earlier, I'm glad to see it's doing well. Because, you know, I mean, coming into the year, you would think that would probably be one of the AAA games that would fall by the wayside. I mean, especially with it being out only a week before Watch Dogs. But, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely have to pick it up over the summer. I'm, I'm excited to play it. Yeah, I'm kind of grateful that um, there is... Some echo, sorry. Um, there's there's definitely a glut of games coming out before E3, and obviously with Watch Dogs being like the last great AAA title before we get on to uh, titles that have been delayed towards 2015, plus every game that's coming out, um, like Last Ditch Effort advertisement for stuff like Dragon Age, stuff like... Um, I think there's like three games coming out the same day as uh, Dragon Age, right? Uh, there's Dragon Age, Alien, Shadow of Mordor, and Drive Club. Yeah, like four fucking games coming out the same fucking day during Drive, the whole season. Drive Club's going to get pooped on so hard. It's bad. I feel bad for them, too. But, yeah, like, they're not worried about games for this year, but they are also looking towards the future. Like, Far Cry 4 is coming out in November. Like, nobody knew about Far Cry 4 until, like, like what, last week? My body's ready. Yeah, so nobody's hurting for games in 2014. Have a game like Wolfenstein do well, like you're saying, is a big step up. And it's not just because people want to get into the Doom beta. They wanted to play Wolfenstein, because it's fucking awesome. So, more power to them. I hope there are more Wolfenstein games coming out after this. I haven't gotten to the end of the game yet, so I don't know if there's any... Potential for a sequel at any point, but if there is, then looking forward to it. So. Okay. It says here you also wanted me to talk about Bound by Flame. If you'd like to. Okay. I'm just going off the agenda here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nobody can actually see the agenda because this is an audio podcast, but I'm looking up the list here. Okay. Um, Bound by Flame. Um, what can I say about Bound by Flame? Think of a next-gen Dragon Age 2, but less polished, made by the same studios that made Mars Warlogs, but they tried, like, really, really, really hard to make a decent dark fantasy type of RPG, but just didn't have the funding to finish it. Like, there are literally scenes, and like, if you heard, if you've heard of reviews of this game, I might have brought it up last week. Um, if you heard of reviews of this game, basically Bound by Flame has the problem of, it paints a picture of a war-torn world that 
is trying to go for Lord of the Ring aspiration, Lord of the Rings aspirations, but comes down to um, what's that one fantasy movie that had Jason Statham in it, and also um, fuck, what's his face, uh, the guy from Narc, the guy from uh, Goodfellas. No, I have no Main idea character. what you're talking about. I don't know. Ah, fuck. Yeah, we're going to do a fucking... In the middle of a podcast. I'm like... Um, hold on. I mean, I know who you're talking about. I don't know what movie you're talking about, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cast, 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 cast. Sorry. I apologize, listeners out here. I'm trying to figure out who is the fucking cat... In the fucking cast of Goodfellas. Ray Liotta. Um, they're going for Lord of the Rings. But we end up with... Return of the King, I believe. But not Return of the King. It's another fucking movie that he did. I feel really dumb. Feel free to edit this, by the way. Um, shit, what, what movie was he in? Fuck. I feel really dumb. It was in SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, In the Name of the King, A Dungeon Siege Tale. That's what I was going for. They went for Lord of the Rings... And they ended up in the name of the king with a dungeon sea tail. If you know what I'm talking about, it's like that. Um, and because the actual uh, budget behind this game, like I, I credit spiders because Mars Mars Warlogs also had aspirations of doing something like a uh, a futuristic Dune type setting, but they ended up with like really bad voice acting bad scripting, bad everything, but you knew that they tried. And that's what they did with Bound by Flame. You know that they tried, but they, again, they just didn't have enough to finish out like certain story points where you know like you're at a point in the story where something important has happened. Like there, Literally, like, there's one point where you, you recruit somebody into your, uh, your party as a whole, and the only way that he can get into your party is if he fights against like your uh, your boss, but you never actually see the fight. The fight just fades to black, and then you come to the ending of the fight. Your guy, your guy that you're recruiting gets in, but you never actually get to see this big battle at all. You just you're just told that it happens and fade to black. It's in your imagination, or at least they're hoping it's in your imagination because they can't they couldn't afford to render or animate that scene, and that happens a lot in the game. Um, as far as dialogue's concerned, some of it's okay, especially if it's, like, one-off dialogue or side quest dialogues that are in a game, but if it's, like, main quest dialogue, it's always garbage. Always. Without exception. Um, I can go on for days about this. Um, the crafting is good as far as, like, weaponry is concerned, and you either creating pieces of armor or buying them from shops, you're more likely to... Uh, build it yourself in this game. There's a lot of DIY type of stuff to build your character up. Um, there's also talent trees in that you're not just based off of being a warrior or based off of being like a sneaky rogue type character or being a mage character. It's all rolled into one. And you get to put points into that as well. So if you're into that as far as RPG stuff's concerned, there's it's that good in the game. But again, know that the story and the dialogue in the game is, might turn you off. So, if you're looking to buy it, buy it for next gen, and definitely wait for it to be on sale. Otherwise, I can't recommend it sight unseen. So, sorry if I disappointed you. If you really wanted to buy it, Swirly. No, it's it's definitely something I would I wouldn't care about anything but gameplay, and it'd be something that I'd get you know once it's on sale or something. So I'll probably still try it out at some point. Yeah, like, like I was saying before, like, with Wolfenstein, it was, it's like one of these titles where people are figuratively starving for new content for these consoles. Like, they need something to play. Now, if you bought Wolfenstein, you got a pleasant, you got a pleasant surprise, like you're saying. If you bought Bound by Flame, if you're willing to forgive a lot of stuff for that game, it's really good at its core. But all the fixings outside of it make it Worse and worse. But it's getting some decent acclaim as far as uh, fans 
our concern and those who have latched on to the game and are like supporting it hardcore. Like we really like Bound by Flint because of these things, even though we're willing to forgive like everything. It's like it's like The Witcher if it wasn't a good game. It was if it, the Witcher series was like okay. It was it had some good ideas, but it, it didn't all quite come together. Like it's still purchasable, it's still playable. You still might like it, but it's not not everything that you want it to be. It doesn't quite live up to expectations. It could be so much more if it was put to uh, somebody who is willing to give spiders more money to make the game. But because they themselves made the game and they had some funding behind them, uh, but not enough to make a great, great, great triple A title, it is what it is. So, no, maybe wait till Christmas when the sales come, pick it up then. But, um, let's see, let's uh, move on to the new stuff here you got for me, but I need you to talk next, because I have no idea what, I guess it's Latin, uh, Metro Redux, yeah, the Metro Last Light series, I believe they're doing something about that. What is, what is this Metro Redux? Uh, so basically, uh, the two Metro games, Metro 2033, which was, did not come out to PlayStation consoles. I don't even know if it, I don't even know if it was out on I am sure it was out on PC, uh, but uh, twenty thirty three and Metro Last Light are um, being basically redone in a new engine, and it is coming both. Um, you can buy them separately uh, as digital downloads, or you can get it for fifty dollars. Packaged together, physical copy, but they're coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. So, I mean, especially for the people who hadn't played these yet, that's pretty good deal. Like myself, which I haven't played them yet. So, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to this, because I've heard they're actually pretty dang good games. Yeah, I, I myself uh, have, I think it's the sequel to the original game on uh, Backlog through PlayStation 3. I haven't played it myself. Um, I know these are popular enough games to actually reissue and put on next gen, like you're saying yourself. Uh, these two titles are definitely worth playing and to put down onto current gen stuff like PlayStation 4, like uh, Xbox One, like current current. Uh, personal computers for everybody to play. Awesome. Um, that being said, I kind of wish the studio behind these two games would have time, funding, and better equipment to make another game. If not in this series, like a new type of uh, IP to see what they can do with something else. Like Metro, the Metro series itself is not bad. Everybody should play, but I want to see them do something else. Yeah, and I mean, if they can do something besides Metro, I'm all for it. They've definitely got talent, even even with uh, working conditions equivalent to probably your average city sewer. <laughs> but yeah, they somebody somebody needs to really get behind that studio. They they basically looking like an they basically working like an average college dorm setting if they didn't have furniture. Like, this dirty-ass carpet. Walls have been painted over multiple times. Crack ceiling, shit like that. Smells funny. Fridge hasn't been cleaned in months, so there's, like, some weird fungus. And no AC. So. Probably that would be stuff. my killer. Yeah, that, and, you know, they live in, like, a oppressive military regime, I would assume, right now. So, no, it's bad. But, uh, yeah. Go, go, go buy Metro Redux. Give them money to make better games. So, uh, let's see. Second item here on the news: You're telling me that Troy Baker and Nor- Nolan North are both voicing in the upcoming Shadow of Mordor game. I mean, that right there, that one sentence should be enough to get anybody extremely excited. I mean, you've got Troy Baker, who's done the Joker, who's done. Uh, 
Joel. Yeah, Joel from The Last of Us. He did Booker from Bioshock Infinite. Uh, he was uh, one of the one of the voices you could pick for Saints Row Four. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something. This, he's done multiple voices. He's done anime. He's done animated movies. Um, he's even done a future film. You could probably buy it. You used to be able to buy it on straight to DVD or Blockbuster, but those don't exist anymore. You probably find it on Netflix if you tried really hard or YouTube. I don't know. He's, uh, he's very popular. Uh, strictly no Romo. He's very looking du- good looking dude. Oh, infinite second son. That's what I was forgetting. There you go. Uh, yeah, he's incredibly talented, and he's going to be the main, main character, like the head dude. Uh, Nolan awesome. North is also going to be in it, who is... Uh, I love Nolan North. He's Nolan, Nathan, he, he's Drake. Nathan freak, fucking Drake. And I mean, he's pretty much been in every single game you can fucking think of. He was, <laughs> he was in fucking Deadpool, as Deadpool. Uh, he's, like you said, he's been in everything, and to have them both in a voicing in one video game is awesome. I think they've done this before. This will be, this will be their third game. Um, yeah. They were in Saints Row 4, both mm-hmm. were optional voices for the main character, and they are both in The Last of Us, which you probably, a lot of people pro unless... Spoilers. Unless, yeah, no, nah, I don't think, well, yeah. Cast as a spoiler. Um, unless you were to look up the cast list, you wouldn't, and I mean, Nolan North's got a pretty recognizable voice, but his acting in The Last of Us, it was, I had no idea it was him, and, and Naughty Dog kept it under wraps, but he was, he was the bad guy, uh, there towards the end, um, and he did a fucking fantastic job as the, as that, with that, just like he does on pretty much everything, but... But yeah, these guys in the same game again. I was already pretty excited for Shadow of Mordor. Uh, looks kind of Assassin's Creed-like with the combat and the parkour and whatnot. And set in Lord of the Rings, Hobbit universe. That's cool. But yeah, throwing these two guys in there, it's... I'm sporting some wood. I think they should have some like Highlander situation in the game where there can be only one of them. So one of them has to die, and the rest that of the time, like, the other guy's the highlighter. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, obviously these, these these two guys aren't, uh, don't have, like, an ounce of animosity between each other. But voice acting is a competitive business. So we're lucky enough to have them, again, in, the, in a third game, interacting with each other this time. In a game, it's good. It's a good thing. And fans of both, or fans of one or the other, get a chance to get a taste of their uh, their vocal range. So very cool. Um, I don't I don't know so much about Shadow of Mordor except for like you were saying before they have parkour, they have uh, climbing mechanics and things like that. Basically, eight from the Assassin's Creed games. Um, the actual gameplay system that they showed off for the tech demo, like the alpha, pre-alpha demo stuff, looked kind of cool. I don't know exactly how much of that's going to actually make it, make it into the full game itself. It looked kind of cool, though. Uh, I, I, I know the game itself is, has a lot of hype behind it. A lot of people are anticipating it. I am just more or less like, why should I buy this game when Witcher 3 is coming out soon? Next year. But still, I can wait for Witcher 3, get the same, if not a better, experience, and if I really want a Lord of the Rings fix, I can just watch the movies. Or read the books. And just be done with it. Because you're a gamer. And you should play all the games with a Z yeah. at the end, not an S. I go poor that way, though, if I play all the games. Because I don't have money for food. And then That's I die, right. and I you can't play be, video games you could, be more, you could be more happy... Being poor and playing video games, you'd be less happy with some more money and not playing video games. I got bills to play Swarly, I'm sorry. I can't play Shadow of Mordor. Unless it gets like a 10 out of 10. You're going to play it. Yeah, I'll pick it up. You're going to play it and you're going to like it. Fine, whatever, Gad. Um, Let's see. New trailer came out for Arkham Knight. It was titties. I mean, it was kind of funny that they said it was a gameplay trailer and we got 
probably about 15 seconds. Yeah, you got like um, two seconds of actual in-game footage. The rest of it was renders. But the awesome thing was they did the gameplay that they did show was the Batmobile. And, I mean, throughout this entire series, I've been, you know, these streets would be pretty fun if I could drive the Batmobile. And we're going to get to. There's nobody on the streets, though. It's just you, and there's going to be, like, shortened corridors of which you can drive around, and it's not going to be, like, Batman 90... Like, Batman... Yeah, Batman 1989, where he literally drives up a wall with the car. Nothing like that. I don't want to drive up the wall with the car. I wouldn't do do. that to my beautiful car. I wouldn't want to do that shit. That'd be awesome. If all these people were fighting out, out in the streets, would you be out in the streets? I don't think so, Jay. Yeah, but I think you'd be inside the whole, at home. The scared. whole theme of of Gotham is there are citizens who are consistently in peril because of these supervillains that are consistently uh, pestering, if not outright trying to kill this, kill them. And Batman has to save these people. Yet now it's just Bat. It, it's literally been happening since Arkham Asylum, Arkham City. Arkham Origins, where you're you're always beating up thugs and supervillains, but you're never really saving citizens unless they're in hostage situations, like predetermined hostage situations. There's never any instance where you're just stopping thugs from beating people up. Like there's, there's any random occurrence. It's just if it's meant to happen, it's already placed in certain situations, and that's it. This is feels like it's going to be the same. But the whole city, the quote-unquote whole city of Gotham, plus whatever Waldorf portions that they had of Arkham Asylum, I assume, since that's part of Gotham still. Um, but yeah, it, I'm okay with this because I'll be more, city. man. I want to save citizens of Gotham, not just because it's cold outside or it happens to be a holiday, so get the fuck out of the city. It's like, what the fuck? These people actually live in here. To have them you know, be a part of the foreground and the background. It doesn't bother me. Have them pelt Batman with snowballs because they don't like him. Arkham City is still one of my, still in my top five favorites from last gen. I don't I'm care not, about the citizens. I just want to beat up bad guys. I'm not saying this game is going to be bad. Like, aside from Arkham Origins, because they weren't, because Rock City wasn't the actual team behind it, they just, you know, gave... WB Montreal, the engine to build the game itself when they went off to go and do their own thing, which prompted them to come back to fix whatever problems or just cause for the series. Um, Rock City's making this game. It's not going to be a bad Batman game. You get your Batmobile, you get to fight against who I'm assuming is going to be the Hush surrogate or the Red Hood surrogate because there's no official Red Hood now that Joker's not in a picture anymore. And we have, I, I'm assuming it's uh, Tim Drake, maybe. The guy that, the one Robin that got, uh, quote unquote, murdered by Joker. And now he, he comes back from the dead to, to haunt Batman. I'm guessing that's who Arkham Knight is in the game. I don't know. It, it can't be, it can't be Deathstroke. Because he's, he might be in, if they ever decide to make a um, Suicide Squad game, he's going to be in that. So it's not him. It's not. It's not Deadshot. You know, I'm. I'm assuming Deadshot will be in the game again. So I know Scarecrow is in the game. It's not him. So who do you think Arkham Knight is? Dude, I don't know. No, I think it's Wolverine. Dude, it's totally the White Ranger. <laughs> Who's your favorite Power Ranger? Green, then White Ranger. <laughs> Yeah, whoever it is, it's going to be awesome. Can't wait for it. Just, you know, it could add a little bit more to it, even though it's going to be the first official Orkham next-gen, current-gen game. So, if we're not counting PC games, so. Um, let's see. Another, I would assume, more important slice of news, even though it's unofficial, official, in talks, whatever. Uh, YouTube, more officially, Google is in talks to buy Twitch for... And I'm hearing for a billion dollars. a lot of money. Twitch makes that much money off attorneys for League of Legends. What do they need a billion dollars from Google for? I'd take a billion dollars. I mean, Twitch could buy a Google with the money they get. 
Don't be ridiculous. They could. Google could buy the world. Twitch doesn't need Google. Google needs Twitch, because they tried streaming through YouTube and fail miserably every time they do that. Basically, my thoughts are, it'd be with all of Google's resources, it'd be good for Twitch, because on the weekends when you've got these huge tur- tournaments, the site, the streams... Like, like, people like us, we're watching, you know, other people play single-player games and whatnot. Streams can kind of go a little meh, and you get all these all these uh, buffering icons because of all the traffic on the, for those league uh, matches, or those <clears throat> tournament matches. So, I mean, adding some stability with some more servers and whatnot is something that Twitch could probably prefer. Something that Google could probably provide, and, you know, that'd be great. But, as we've seen since Google bought YouTube, they try to force their shitty Google Plus down your throat every turn time you turn around on YouTube. And it is insanely frustrating and annoying. I mean, every time I want to comment on something, it says, Oh, link your Google Plus. And then you can't really say no... And then you gotta wait like ten minutes to go back into your account and disconnect to Google Plus and get your account back to how it normally is. And that is so fucking annoying. And if they implement anything like that into Twitch, I will be pretty pissed off. What I'm assuming Google wants is official control over content provided by those on Twitch. Um I mean, you get, I'm going to name drop a lot of names here. Um, you get guys like Man vs. Game, uh, Gassy Mexican, Towley, uh, Gold Glove, folks like that, like, uh, Lol Renene, folks like that, um, who provide content on Twitch, but they also provide content on YouTube. And Google wants to consolidate all that, and they see the big wet bite that. Twitch gets out of every percentage that they take from um, subscriber subscriber money. Because once you get a certain amount of subscribers, you can um, get sponsored through Twitch. And once you're on the sponsored list, as long as you get keep up a certain amount of viewers every time that you stream, it's usually daily once you start doing that with uh, subscriber money, Twitch gets a percentage out of that, but the rest of the money goes towards you. Google wants that money. Because they see the content provided by those who, and usually this happens most of the time, that it used to just be YouTube videos for gamers and stuff like that. Like you see a lot of Let's Plays, you see a lot of commentary tracks, you see a lot of reviews, you see a lot of previews and things like that. That's why you see companies like Rev3 Games. All their stuff is usually online, so they show off stuff. But most of the time it's folks like myself, it's folks like you, Swirly, who eventually build up their own audience through Twitch and get paid for it. Now, Google wants that money, and if they buy Twitch, they're going to get that money, and they're going to get, like you say, they're going to try to, I would assume, I'm not going to say they're going to, but more than likely, if they continue down the road of putting Google Plus on everything, instead of the advertisements, either local or national, that you'd see in commercials nowadays, which I find hilarious that, uh, on another thought with Twitch, that, Everybody thought that when they got online that they'd be able to escape commercials. There are more commercials on Twitch than I've ever seen on television. Like if you're not if you're not subscribing to somebody's Twitch page that is sponsored through Twitch, you have to sit through every fifteen minutes in an ad all the time. That's more time than I've ever seen on a normal television show. And Google's gonna try to put their advertisements through Twitch all the time if they manage to buy Twitch. That's what I'm assuming. Now like you were saying before, Google has the money and the resources and the servers to be able to help people who have buffering problems on their Twitch pages. They're not going to help everybody, obviously. They're not going to help me because I'm not sponsored, and all I do is I stream through PlayStation 4, and I barely get enough viewers as it is. It's nobody's fault by myself. Um, so they're not going to worry about folks like me and you, but they might worry about folks, again, like a man versus game who's consistently like bitching and complaining about not having enough um, 
server space, especially since PlayStation 4 and Xbox One decided that they were going to stream to Twitch all the time, that affected, like, everybody that was streaming through their PC. Now Google's going to step in and try to help out with that, but they're going to want a little bit on the back end for that. So, I don't know. It, there's a lot of bad to go with the good on this. Um, out of all the horrible companies that could buy this, uh, could buy Twitch, Google seems like the least horrible. Well, there's after after the initial uh, rumor came out, it also came out that they weren't the only one that was trying to go uh, to get the purchase, and one of the names that came out was Microsoft. Yeah, if and, Microsoft did it, then I mean, it, it would be over. I refuse to get involved in any kind of console war, and this has nothing to do with that, but one side or the other of the console war owning Twitch would be absolutely horrible. It would be bad for everybody. Yeah, I mean, uh, that would be like, I wouldn't say it would be the killing blow, but it would definitely highly damage Sony, if not Nintendo, if not PC gaming. I mean, Microsoft obviously has the, the foothold in PC gaming if you're not going through Lexus or running your own servers, um, especially through Windows. Um, yeah, just to have Microsoft owning Twitch would just be like, well, Sony can still use Twitch, but we want percentages off of Twitch now through you guys. Or Sony's just going to say, fuck it, we still have Uplay. Nobody uses Uplay. And if everybody's forced to use Uplay instead of Twitch... Them. Fuck, man. You stream, like Twitch. not you play. You stream. Sorry, sorry. Thank you for <laughs> the second time you corrected me, by the way, through this stuff. I appreciate it. God. Uh, totally professional. Um, yeah, Twitch has basically monopolized online gaming streaming if you're not using Hitbox. So, like, Hitbox is, like, the only alternative, really, for streaming games. So, they're, like... Uh, they're still coming up, but if I would compare it, it would be like if Ouya was going against Xbox One. Xbox One's going to win all the time because people are more familiar with Twitch. Twitch is always advertised. Twitch always has the resources behind it and the bigger names and more popularity behind it. I mean, you can still use Hitbox. People like Hitbox. I've seen a lot of it on uh, Twitter when people are like, I hate using Twitch because such and such, so I'm going to switch over to Hitbox. Especially when the news about this came out about YouTube slash Google and talks about buying Twitch. Everybody freaked the fuck out and just said, well, fine. We're just going to leave. And they go to Hitbox. Not a lot of people use Hitbox. So. Oh, what I'm trying to say is if Twitch is actually bought through Google, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world, but it's still bad. So. You're going to lose a lot of individuality when it comes individuality when it comes to uh, Twitch and the bigger names behind Twitch. So either you, it happens and they get you know something out of it, or it doesn't and everybody freaked out for nothing. So, but anyways, I'm rambling. Um, let's put on the news here. You're telling me that there's a second game already in development by Naughty Dog. What's up with that? Technically, I guess you could say it's a third since. Um, the Last of Us Remastered is in development. Does it count? Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Uh, but, I mean, everybody knows about Uncharted PS4, which I'm sure we're going to get a lot of news about in a couple weeks, which that's I'm very canceled. excited about. I would kill you. You would kill me if it was, if it was true? Like, God damn it, Jay. Literally murder you. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, there's... Um, uh, the Sony, or, pff, not Sony, uh, the Naughty Dog head, um, it wasn't Neil Druckmann, it was the other guy, uh, he actually came out and said, you know, we've got two things in development right now besides The Last of Us, so, obviously... Was there an official name, or just no. they said they are working on something? No, it was just, he, you know, all he said was, we've got, we've got two... I can't remember what his exact words were. Maybe it was something, incredible experiences or something like that in development. Obviously, Uncharted's probably not coming out until, I would guess, winter or spring 2015. Uh, so I, it's going to be a while before we hear about this. Uh, but it's, it's, it's nice to uh, speculate what they might be working on. I know they said it's about a 50-50% chance 
that they would do another Last of Us game. So who knows? Could be The Last of Us 2, could be a new IP. It'll be fun to think about until they uh, reveal it. I just wish that they actually would be able to keep a company together. I mean, obviously, people need to grow and move on to new things, but, you know, finish a new product after The Last of Us, then talk to me about the new shit that you're going to do. Like, finish The Last of Us Remastered, then, you know, give me your new IP. Don't just talk about it, but, you know, be secretive and just say, oh, we're making a new mobile game or no, uh, dog, making a, a new app game or some shit like that. It's, 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 I don't know. Don't be like Insomniac and just, you know, <sighs> bring my hopes up and immediately crush them. That's what I asked Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog has never crushed anybody. I'm still waiting for Uncarded. Nobody wants that. I do. You're a clown. I am. So, yeah. Yeah, speak, guess, speaking yeah. of, I know I know a lot of uh, news has been um, about how people have been going away from Naughty Dog, which I'm sure the majority of those were just because contracts had run up. Although, you know, the Hennig and... When you lose your main villain for your game six months into development because you wanted to write a story with the lady that left because you didn't agree with what she wanted to do for Uncharted 4, obviously, like a problem. Obviously that was big, but I'm sure a lot of the others were blown way out of proportion. Uh, but they had um, a big-name signing to come into the studio, um, and, you know... <laughs> it's kind of my fault for not being prepared for this. Is um, it me? No. Am I going to be the new guy? I said no. big name. I am a big name. Uh, but big I think name. it was an art designer from... Uh, uh, Halo? It was something Halo. I don't know if it was 343 or Bungie, though. If it's not Bungie, I don't care. But it was it was a pretty good, it was a pretty good uh, hire for them, so... It wasn't the music director. What? It wasn't it. Music director got fired. Art guy left from Naughty Dog. So, I mean, if one, if one of the people who were working on uh, Destiny was was done with his renders and came over to Naughty Dog, I guess that'd be kind of cool. Was that the same guy? No. Okay. Oh. And I don't care, man. I do care, but, you know, I need official names. Uh, okay. Well, I guess with that, uh, I don't know, kind of short today, but we got most of the stuff we wanted to get done. Is there any other news? That's about it. I mean, there's, of course, there's plenty of other small stuff, but we'd be here for days. We have E3 coming up, let's see, June 10th, so we got, like, three weeks and some change. Plenty of video games to talk about. Watch Dogs is coming out next week, so we'll have plenty to talk about that next week once we grab our copies and hopefully give you some first impressions by the end of uh, the week. Maybe, like, what, next Thursday? Maybe? Sure. Think it next Thursday? Be too early? Probably more like Friday or weekend. Okay, so what we're telling you fair listeners out there is to go to our iTunes page, rate, subscribe, Tell us what you think about these episodes, especially all the way up to episode 95 here on the BSN Arcade Radio Podcast. Let us know. Go sign up for the forums at virtualsportsnetwork.com. Let us know about that. Also, uh, I think I said I would put up a link for Bombers. He's shit my pants review of At Last as he uh, chicken heartedly played, like, I think it was 30 minutes of the game. And he couldn't even make it that far without crapping himself, which is hilarious. Needs to untuck so, his sack. Yeah. So as soon as he, uh, when I say he, I mean Swirly. As soon as Swirly posts this on uh, virtualsportsnetwork.com on the, in the arcade section, I will be posting up a link for that video. So you'll be able to see it for yourselves. But uh, enough about that. We're going to have final thoughts. Now, I know Swirly has a birthday coming up. How old are you going to be, birthday boy? 17. 17. So I want everybody to wish Orly a happy birthday this weekend if you see him. Or go to, I think it's KAK133 and Saturday, correct? So uh, Friday, tomorrow, Friday. 
on Friday. I want you to find him on Twitter at KAK133 and wish him a happy birthday. Otherwise, because this is a huge fucking disappointment to me, and I've been pimping this over and over again for the past two, three weeks. Uh, 8 bit salute and Operation Supply Drop is going to be a swirly list because of his birthday and other obligations that he needs to take care of. So it's not his fault. He has to take care of some stuff. He's going to hang out with the family. You know how it is. Um, so he's going to be unable to stream for Operation Operation Supply Drop and 8 bit salute. That's not to say that he won't be able to make it up or. Do something else for them later on during the year, hopefully. Who knows? We're going to look it up. Well, now, so, now that I have a PC, I can yeah. throw in my other consoles besides PS4 and Xbox One into the mix. And you know, I've been saying this for a long time now. I've been dying to do an Uncharted marathon. So maybe that might be somewhere in the cards over the summer. That is going to play a lot of Dota 2. Um, no. This just in, he's going to play a lot of Dota 2. You heard it here first. Anyways, um, so what I'm going to say is, I don't know. I'd like to do it in your stead, maybe. Play for a couple hours during the weekend so people can still get money for you for that uh, 8-bit salute, but it might not be happening. I don't know. It's unfortunate, but you got to do what you got to do. Well, and then there's the, uh, damn, I forgot their name again. The one that's in the fall. Child's Play? Child's Play, yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely be on that. When that so you think around. we could sign up for that? Well, I'm already, I already have a profile over there. I'm pretty sure it doesn't go away. Yeah. So we're going to try to see, and by we, it might just be me. Um, guess we're going to be busy this weekend. Memorial Day, and it's Royal's birthday. Um, we're going to have to see if uh, Operation Supply Drop is a year-long thing. Because it's Royal can't do it, I'll try to do it sometime, if not this weekend, sometime during the year, probably during the summertime. Um, and I'll have to sign up for Child's Play, because while it is nice for me to stream to folks on Twitch, as well as I'm sure Royal feels good about doing it as well, uh, we feel a hell of a lot better to help out those in need. So, I don't know. I mean, we can give people a link to your fundraising thing, maybe. They can still give money for it, I would assume. It's to a good cause. You're not going to stream. Yeah, um, I have no idea what the actual URL is, but if you go to my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash swarly133, the first link under my, uh, under the, uh, channel is to my 8-bit sleep page. Okay. What I think we should do is, if we can't do it this weekend, probably can't, um, see if we can keep it going year-round. So, at least we'll get people like the listeners out there who maybe consider it and have some extra money in their pockets, maybe put towards, uh, this whole business. Uh, give out because basically the whole the whole thing about Operation Supply Drop is, and I keep on saying it's like I'm guilting Swirly. He, he's not responsible for this. Um, basically, the idea of Operation Supply Drop is for soldiers who are in need overseas of entertainment of entertainment, especially those who are suffering from PTSD. Uh, I like to play video games, just like Mania. And fair listeners out there. So they need stuff like video game consoles. They need actual video games. Uh, especially like first-person shooters, which I found very interesting. That, you know, those who are suffering through the horrors of war, quite literally, uh, get solace through playing games like Call of Duty, which is a war game in all intents and purposes. So I find that very surprising. But folks like playing Call of Duty, folks like to play Gears... Uh, Grand Theft Auto, anything that they get their hands on, uh, any donations from people to Operation Supply Drop goes towards purchasing video game purchases for those overseas. So it's for a good cause. Even if me or Swirly are not going to stream this weekend, uh, the very least that you guys can do, those who are listening, and be sure to tell others if you are going to participate so they can help out as well. Any little bit counts. 
Um, again, go to Swirly123 on Twitch. Uh, click on the first link underneath his uh, streaming screen and donate. So, it's for a good cause. Go do it, please. I beg you. Do it! So, um, anyways. Do we have any other final thoughts? Um, I'm really excited to play some more iRacing. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I, I, I get. To. I'm looking forward to streaming sometime tonight, if not tomorrow, if not the weekend, because it's three day weekend, yay. Um, as always, thank you for those who are listening. To this podcast for 95 episodes straight, which should be very interesting because uh, I think we're actually over 95 episodes, give or take. But you know, yeah, there was of... there was a while, there was a long while uh, where we didn't count special podcasts and interviews. Yeah, so I'm percentages. sure I'm sure we're well over 100. Yeah, officially, we're at episode 95. But anyways, um, thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for rating. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your continued patronage uh, to this podcast. We're looking forward to doing one next week and beyond. And in the next upcoming weeks, we'll be doing some reports, hopefully on future reports for E3 as well as E3 itself, because we're going to hopefully do our annual drunk cast for E3, which is always a good thing to do. Always fun. Um, so we're looking forward to doing that too. So look forward to that in the future. And uh, again, thank you for listening. So without further ado, I guess we're done, right? We are. All right. So we're done. Episode 95 is in the can for the Virtuous Force Network Arcade Radio Podcast. And we're looking forward to doing some more next week. So thank you for listening. Uh, say goodbye, Swirling. Smoochers. Thank you for listening. Peace out.